Okay, folks, it's time for more fun with funds. And here we have more fun with funds. And I made them purple just to keep you awake. Specific purpose fund. Receive interest income from investments that support the hospital's research activity. So remember, again, what we're talking with specific purpose fund is going to be a fund with donor restrictions. So the donor said you can only do this with the money. So we had investments and they said you can't spend these investments. And the income from the investment has to go to research activity. And we took the money into research activity in the general fund before. So I'm going to debit cash and credit um, unreal, I'm sorry, investment income research. And we'll take it out later on. We're going to release the funds and send them over to the general funds in a few minutes. So next, I receive restricted gifts, 60,000 for education, 55,000 for research. So I'm going to debit cash. This is going to go into the fund with donor restrictions. I should say net assets with donor restrictions, which is really like a fund, until I actually do education and research. And as you know, from looking at the general funds, we will do that this year. Debit contributions research. And this here is should be sixty thousand. Now the earnings from the endowment were sixty thousand dollars, and this is money that we could use that we're gonna be able to use um, for whatever we want, as opposed to the six thousand over here, which has to be used for research. It gets very important important that you only spend the money on what you actually um, what the donor specified that you spend the money for. So now we release the funding for research, education, and endowment income. So I'm gonna the, the journal entry would be net assets released from program use restriction and what you do here is you write whatever the restriction is research is sixty one thousand dollars so that would be I guess this fifty five thousand and some other money education is fifty nine thousand And again, that's the 60,000. I guess they only decided to release 59,000 of it, whatever. It's $60,000. And then cash is $180,000. And then we saw up above where we took that money. Here it is. Into the general fund. Now we've got a time restricted fund. And again, this is a net assets with donor restrictions. And I'm going to collect pledges that were owed of $12,000. These are time restricted until we collect them. And credit pledges receivable, $12,000. And then we release the fund. Now we're going to release the funds over to the general fund. So I'm going to debit net assets released from time restrictions of $12,000 and credit cash of $12,000. And here, Again, you can see right here is the entry where we took them into the general fund. The plant fund, I received donated equipment with a fair value of $25,000. So I'm going to debit property, plant, and equipment. And it's just going to sit in here until we use it of $25,000 and credit contributions, plant. $25,000. And then um, 
I receive restricted gifts to acquire equipment of $60,000. It's interesting because the plant fund is not really for keeping all plants. It's for plant-related transactions. And when there's restrictions, it's really for plant-related restrictions by donors. I'm going to debit cash credit contributions plan $60,000. And again, that's a revenue. So someone could, they could donate property or they could donate cash. Then we have fund investments. So these would be investments in the plant fund. And then the income can be used, I suppose, to acquire plant. So debit cash for $7,000. Credit investment income plan, $7,000. And then transfer donated equipment to the general fund. I'm going to take this $25,000 equipment and I'm going to send it over to the general fund and they're actually going to use it. Plant acquisition of $25,000 and credit property, plant, and equipment of $25,000. And again, if I could show you the general fund where we received the money, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, yes, I will. Here you go. In case you don't believe me, is right here. Okay, transfer general funds to acquire assets, if you remember this transaction. So here I'm going to credit cash for, I like, for $200,000 and debit net assets released plant acquisition. You would do this once you're ready to buy the asset in the general fund, of course. And we're going to collect these pledges receivable, additional pledges receivable of $105,000. So debit cash of $105,000, credit pledges receivable. And they're obviously restricted until we get the money. And now we're going to use this money to, I guess, this was to buy investments. And then the income from the investments is going to be used to buy plant. So debit investments, $122,000 in credit cash. Now let's look at the endowment fund. The endowment fund would only be permanent endowments. Okay, a time-related endowment would be time-restricted. So endowment fund would only be permanent endowments. And the deal with the permanent endowment is that the income from the permanent endowment can be spent on either specific things that are restricted by the donor or on whatever the, the hospital wants. So we debit cash $415,000, credit contributions, permanent endowment, and it used to be temporary or time-restricted endowment and permanent, and they've kind of done away with that terminology now. The FASB is trying to get away from that. And then we buy additional investments, so debit investments, $400,000, credit cash. $400,000. And that's what would give us these journal entries of what will ultimately result in these financial statements over here. So you can see these net assets released coming out of the donor restricted funds, those these items here, which we've been talking about before. And here they're coming into the general funds right here in the statement of operations. And here you can see the segregation of net assets into without donor restrictions and with donor restrictions.